Hi, I'm Jared. And I'm David. And this week on Hood Slappers, we're going to be reviewing the, uh, hold on, 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Hybrid Max. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. The Toyota Highlander, a name synonymous with great clans of old who once roamed the Scottish Highlands, where my family's from. The McCollins, the McPhersons, and the Frasers. It's a proud name that Toyota wanted to reuse for their newest SUV, the larger and more powerful Grand Highlander. Now, Toyota likes the name Highlander because they say it's powerful, energetic, and rugged, just like the Highlanders themselves. But what exactly is so different about the Grand Highlander? I mean, how much better can it be? Well, here to help me with that is this week's special guest. We couldn't get a real Scotsman, so we had to settle for an Englishman. Please welcome this week's guest, David. Thanks, Jared. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't your Highlanders get kicked out of the Scottish Highlands and were left starving and homeless on the streets of Edinburgh? Yeah, well, didn't the Scots beat the English in Wembley five to one? That was 1928. Still stings, doesn't it? At any rate, let's take a closer look at the 2024 Grand Highlander and see what makes it different and better. The most obvious difference is size. The Grand Highlander Hybrid is over two inches wider and six and a half inches longer, offering 374 more liters of maximum cargo space than the regular hybrid Highlander and 280 more liters of passenger volume. Now, Toyota boasts because this is a larger SUV that you can sit comfortably up to eight people, depending on the trim level that you go with. And that means three people in the third row. With Toyota's advertising though, it's always usually just a really small child and a really thin adult. And we feel that that is false advertising, especially with the average middle-aged American weighing in at about 200 pounds. So we wanted to give it a proper test. So don't move from the toilet, because let's just admit it, it's probably where you're watching us from. That's enough about number ones and twos, and let's check out the third. Now the shoulder, leg, and headroom is certainly better than the normal Highlander, but I think it's important to remember viewers that this isn't some new segment that Toyota came up with. No, this competes directly with the Volkswagen Atlas and the Honda Pilot. And compared with them, the size is pretty comparable. Certainly is, and even though it's comfortable, I still haven't met a third row that I really like. I know what you mean. Like the front row, the driver and the passenger, they got all the controls. The middle row, they've got climate control, they've got heated and cooled seats. And third row, what do we have? Uh, we got cup holders. But this really goes against everything that third row should be about. I mean, this is supposed to be the cool spot of the vehicle, like on a school bus. I mean, if you're gonna make someone sit back here, at least give them something. What about this? You can eat that. Now the engine is also on the list of grand items that you'll find here. But which one do you go with? The 2.4 turbo, the 2.5 naturally aspirated, or this one? Toyota's brilliant 2.4 liter turbocharged hybrid max engine that offers a grand total of 362 horsepower with its grand six speed automatic transmission. And the other engine options will give you either an eight speed or a CVT transmission. Now, despite what your father-in-law may say, the maintenance cost on this is no more than any other Highlander. There really is nothing bad about this car. Actually, there is one thing, David. What? One complaint people do have is that the design is a bit blah. Now, it was designed by Calty Design Research, a Toyota studio division, and I think they're responsible for the white tube sock and the camouflage stop sign. I'm just kidding. Please don't sue us. They really need an entire studio to design this thing? Yeah. You'd think they'd save a lot more money if they just had one meeting and said, let's take the RAV4 and make it bigger. It does look very familiar, but they did a great job on the interior. An interior that hosts many great features like a 12.3 inch display system, heads up display, an 11 speaker JBL sound system, wireless charging, and a proper button to screen ratio. Now this is a testimony to how well Toyota knows their demographic. Average age of a Toyota driver is 41 and a half years of age. There's a lot of older Toyota drivers out there. So they've kept this garage door opener feature. You know, for all the pensioners out there who need living in their senior villages, need access to the underground parking. And this is good because this will allow them to park their car quickly and get back to what's really important, yelling at kids who walk on their lawn. One additional feature that you'll receive on the limited trim level and up is puddle lamps with the Grand Highlander logo. 
I don't see anything. Huh. Maybe it only works when there's actually a puddle there. I think you're right. Here, let's try. To be fair, there are a lot more puddles in the Highlands. A few other features that are actually useful as well as family friendly are proximity unlocking door handles on all four doors, Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 that includes roadside assist, auto high beam, and blind spot, as well as a power rear door with kick sensors, like a soccer ball. Football. Soccer. Football. Soccer. Oh. There can be only one. Well, all in all, it looks like this is a great vehicle. The outside might be a bit bland, but obviously that doesn't matter to actual Grand Highlander owners, as they rank the car 4.4 stars out of five. But anyway, let's take it for a drive, discuss price, fuel economy, and ask why is Toyota stuck in a hybrid world? Oh, excuse me. Come on, David, let's go. Well, David, here we are in the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Hybrid Max. What are your first thoughts? <laughs> I like it, buddy. I like. I love the the cool giant sunroof. I feel like I'm in a submarine right now with the no, quiet noise too. Well, the way I drive, we might end up in one. <laughs> and also, this display screen at the front. This is larger than the TV I used to have in my old apartment. Yikes, <laughs> the times are tight, eh? <laughs> wow, well, you've come a long way, David. David. Yes, I, I do like it. I, I, I really. I think it's a great looking vehicle. My only problem with the interior is this color. Uh, they call, uh, what's that mushroom? Portobello? Portobello, is that I, what it's called? That's what it's called. That's Porto the interior color, Portobello. And you rub poo off of mushrooms <laughs> to make them look better. So I just don't know if that's the right word you'd want to use for that, but uh, brown, light brown. You feel there's mushroom for improvement. Yes, yeah, so I do feel there is mushroom yeah. for improvement. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's a nice, it's spacious. It's everything that a family vehicle needs Porter, to be. Porter, Porter. So, sorry, that was a portobello. Uh, oh, all right, all right. Well, right. What can I say? I'm a fun guy. <laughs> so what's the price cost on something like this? So if you want this here, the portobello interior, and this car, the way it sits, you're going to be looking at the top price of $68,000. Now, if you want to get your entry level non-hybrid, you're looking at about $53,000. But if you want to dip into that hybrid game, you're going to spend around fifty-seven. dollars thousand dollars it's a little more expensive than the other vehicles it competes with but that's because it's a hybrid and you pay a little more for a hybrid yeah well it's a hybrid not a low hybrid exactly <laughs> excellent point why is the hybrid tech more expensive anyway well okay it's not that that it's just you know what i always find this fascinating the two biggest automotive manufacturers in the world are toyota and volkswagen and they've taken two completely different turns volkswagen is dead set on fully electric vehicles where toyota is dead set on hybrids i mean this is interesting, 12 million hybrids sold worldwide. When we first were to review, it was I think a 2020 Highlander hybrid, it was 15 million. So they've done 5 million in the last few years. Uh, they got what, 15 electric vehicles uh, that you can choose from. They're dead set in this hybrid world. They think that hybrid is the future, where Volkswagen thinks electric is the future. But we're gonna see where that goes. It's like CD-ROM versus Laserdisc, yeah. we mentioned that before. But we're gonna see where it ends up. But I think it'll be very interesting in the near future. What, what do you think, Jerry? Okay, personally, I think that electric is a big step. Okay, you're saying get out of your gas vehicle, go to electric. I think hybrid is that middle ground what more people will prefer. It's the best of both worlds, it really is. Nice. So what is the fuel economy on this hybrid? So if you go with this one, because there's different trim levels in this, in this model, so it, it all varies. But this particular one, you're looking at nine liters per hundred kilometers in the city, and you're looking at 8.8 .8 on the highway for this grand machine. So again, there's a reason why you pay uh, for the Highlander Hybrid Max, because it is gonna give you that much better fuel economy, especially um, on the highway. Is it true I heard if you put a little vegetable juice in the engine, it'll run smoother? Now, why would you say that? Is that or is that just when it's a V8 engine? <laughs> so, hey, you know, I've never liked tomato juice. I never liked Caesars. No? It's, tomato juice is the worst drink. I don't know who came up with that. You know, it's just, oh, man. You say tomato, I say tomato, so it's all good. Uh, speaking of food, too, I've actually, there's a little pack of crackers in the glove box here, just in case you decide to soup up your ride. Yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> uh, cream of mushroom room. <laughs>
Now, David, there's no secret you are from the UK. You're a, you're a, you're a bit of a gangster, are you not? You grew up on the streets? Yeah, yeah, I was raised on the street. Coronation represents. Is that you know, right? Oh, I see. I didn't know that. Viewers, there you go. Yeah. A bit of a celebrity. Shout out to the CBC. <laughs> so we talked about fuel economy. We talked about pricing. But, you know, with hybrids, mm -hmm. the main thing you want to concern about is the battery. Like, what did you... <sighs> yeah, but, you know, people got this anxiety about hybrids and electric cars and batteries. So this is, it's almost your standard is your eight year, 160,000 kilometer warranty on your hybrid components. And I say components because the battery itself, and this is alarming, is 10 year, 240,000 kilometers. I'm very alarmed. <clears throat> See, I saw, I noticed that, viewers, you saw that too, but that is your battery warranty. Whereas a lot of other manufacturers will stick with the 8160. So Toyota is, not only are they committed, but they're committed to making you feel comfortable to say hey we got your back on this thank you toyota i appreciate that you're the best i'm less alarmed now less alarmed. there's a lot of other cool features too not just for the driver in the back there's a 1500 watt outlet that you can plug in um all kinds of fun things you want to play nintendo 64 back here you want to put in a hot plate make a grilled cheese sandwich nintendo 64 yeah Get some golden eye. Get some golden eye in the Go back. Oh man, that was a good yeah. game, eh? Yeah. yeah. So you could play that in the back seat. Exactly. Yeah, while making a grilled cheese sandwich. This at is, the same time. At the same time, and just get lean assist doing everything for you. This is incredible. This is good. And you could. Get out of the driver's seat, go to the rear, play it, because this will actually drive for you with Toyota there Sense 3.0. Yeah. Not the third seat, the third row, you don't get all you get is cookies. The second row. Well, you don't get cookies anymore. No. Because they are gone. Gone. So earlier you mentioned a few Highland clan families. Yeah, that's you, right. Yeah. Do you know any others? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, there's the uh, the McDonald's, there's the Arby's, and there's the Wendy's. They're very <laughs> prominent clans there. Oh, yeah, I KFC what you did there, buddy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm loving it. But uh, all right, all right. <laughs> but uh, you know, we all know the Highlanders lived off the land, and uh, this can drive off the land as well. And you have your different drive modes on this vehicle. So you have your, you know, your regular, your normal. You have your eco mode. But then you have uh, down here rock and dirt. What? You know, you got to get up those hills in the Highlands. You're gonna need rock and dirt for sure. You need mud and sand. You know, in case it's yep. slippery. And you got those puddle lights for all that mud. Uh, and then you have your normal mode and then your sport mode. So you got lots to choose from. Do they, have, do they have a pothole mode? No, that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be a good idea. <laughs> now this, this car, it's got, I mean, what was it? 362 horsepower and the torque on the max is 400 pounds of torque. That is asinine for a vehicle of this size, an SUV family go-getter, a shopping vehicle for mom and dad to carry on yeah. with kids. It's remarkable, but it is a powerful machine. Very powerful. I feel confident and manly. Do you feel manly? I feel manly. You know, I was Even just though I'm in the passenger seat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You could be in the third row though. Yeah. See, if I give it the beans here, I'm gonna step on it. Ooh, like, this thing is yeah, just... baby. Man, that goes. Hey, fill those horses. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, we call that the ranch. That's yeah. where we keep the 362 horses. Up We're front. hoofing it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Dave, there's always bad news among all good news. We've said a lot of good stuff about this vehicle. Is there bad news when it comes to wait times? Uh, well, the good news is if you want the petrol version, you can get it right away. Hmm. The bad news is if you want the hybrid version, there is a wait from six to nine months. Okay. Although and there is good news to that too, because it means it's a big family car, so you can, you know, knock up your wife, wait nine months, and by the time she's ready, bing, bam, boom, your car's ready for you. That's not a bad idea, actually. I wonder how many people are going to do that. Yeah. <laughs> that's brilliant. That's brilliant. Because it's roomy enough to conceive the baby in the back too, so. So that's a two for one. Yeah. Well, we had a grand day today. The sun is shining and I made a new friend. Thank you, Jared. The Grand Highlander. Because like Highlanders of old, it is powerful, it is electric, and it is rugged. But in today's automotive world, a family vehicle needs to be more than that. It needs convenience, it needs safety, and it needs space. And Toyota was able to make an automotive cocktail that fits all of those needs and might be arguably one of the best out there. So with that, I give the, hold on, 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Hybrid Max, my hood slap of approval. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and we'll see you all next time.
A big thanks to our friends at Forbes Waterloo Toyota for allowing us to use this 2024 Grand Highlander Hybrid Max. If you're in the market for one, you can go see them. Hey Forbes, that's another Highland name.